So chapter seven talks about various types of winds. And we spent some time talking about the middle or the mesoscale winds, different types of winds that last minutes to hours and they're kind of, you know, 50 miles or so uh, is as large as they get. Now we're gonna talk about kind of global scale winds, uh, macro scale winds. And I'd like to focus on uh, more the planetary macro scale winds. And ultimately, um, these are kind of prevailing winds that that we're going to see that they do shift north and south throughout the course of a year. But these are why we um, here at our latitude um, are under the influence of what we call the mid-latitude westerlies. Um, that's an example of a planetary macro scale wind. So uh, back in 1735, uh, George Hadley came up with this idea of a global air circulation, or global air circulation, or which ultimately creates wind. And he said, if we start with the equator and we consider the intense heating that occurs there, and we, about zero degrees latitude, that air rises, and see, let's make this the equator zero degrees latitude and so let's make this north and let's make this south you know so here's the poles so the air rises and it hits the tropopause remember I've been kind of talking about actually we're gonna talk about circulation within the troposphere so it hits the tropopause T pause at the top of the troposphere and it goes either direction it goes north and it goes south okay um, and the single cell model that he first came up with, and, and we're going to see here in a minute, um, it, it works out better if we kind of amend his single cell model. But then Hadley said, said it will go to the poles and it will descend at the poles, and then it will come back and follow along the land to the equator. So he said basically there are, he called this the single cell model, so there was a a cell in the northern hemisphere and a cell in the southern hemisphere, starting at the equator, going to the poles. Does that make sense? So here's one cell in the northern hemisphere, one here's one cell in the southern hemisphere. Yeah. Okay, so the air sinks at the poles and returns to the equator, traveling on, along the Earth's surface. Now, what he didn't take into account with this one single cell. Now, when it says single cell, notice that it's really two cells because it's one in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere. But what Hadley didn't take into account is the fact that the Earth is spinning or rotating. And if we throw that into the mix, we actually come up with something a little more complicated. It's actually a three-cell model in each hemisphere, or six-cell model, so three-cell models in each hemisphere. And as we go from the single cell to the three-cell in each hemisphere, then we can understand it matches up with a little bit better of what we observe. Okay, so here's his single cell circulation model. Okay, he said the poles, obviously there's cold, dense air. Okay, hot air ascending at the equator. Okay, so he said we kind of have a surface flow from the poles towards the equator. And then at the equator, it rises. That's kind of what's being shown here. This is rising air hitting the, the tropopause up here and going either direction. So those, here's our single cell in the northern hemisphere and our single cell in the southern hemisphere. Okay. So again, this works okay. Uh, in 1735, uh, they didn't know as much as we know now to match up um, the kind of prevailing winds. But with the Earth rotating, things are a little more complicated than this. We have, with the Earth rotating, remember, we have that redirection we call the Coriolis force. Okay. So kind of based upon his original 1735 single cell model, we actually today now, if we go with a three cell model, things match up pretty good. And we'll be talking more about each of these cells. Okay, but I've gone ahead and you can see, I'm just going to focus on the northern hemisphere. So this is the equator, and we have three cells. The first cell next to the equator is called the Hadley cell. And you see it is a circulation cell where air rises at the equator 
and it goes north all of uh, I guess they don't go it goes north and then it sinks about 30 degrees about 30 degrees latitude and then it returns that's our first of three cells okay. above the Hadley cell is the feral cell and the feral cell then um, travels north um, in the northern hemisphere along the Earth's surface okay until it meets up with something we're going to call the polar front here and then it ascends and then it travels uh, south to complete this cell right here so this is the feral cell and if you match up where we are actually we are definitely we're about 45 I want to say degrees north latitude so we are here in the feral cell and I believe your textbook does not introduce that term the feral cell I wish they did and then at the top in both hemispheres we have the polar cell. So the polar cell, if you kind of look at this, and we'll be talking more about each one of these cells, but just in general you can see that at upper, um, in the upper troposphere it goes again from north to, excuse me, from south to north, and then along the, um, the Earth's surface it comes from the poles towards the equator. So upper elevations it goes from the equator toward the poles, at the pole, it sinks, and then, and then it, so that is the polar cell up here. Three cells in each hemisphere. Um, so a little bit about, you know, this is just a very, in this one figure is a lot of information. We'll be breaking it down a little bit, but um, there is a region uh, with regard to airflow we call the doldrums. And actually, the doldrums are around zero degrees latitude or so. It's where the air is rising. Um, then at the surface, associated with the Hadley cell, I don't know if you can see this, but associated with the Hadley cell, which is about between zero and 30 degrees north latitude and zero and 30 degrees south latitude. Remember, we have a Hadley cell in both the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. We call these our easterly trade winds. Specifically in the northern hemisphere, there are northeasterly trades, and in the southern hemisphere, there are southeasterly trades. And then again at the Earth's surface, we have um, associated with the feral cell at the surface, we have our, our westerlies, sometimes called the mid-latitude westerlies. There's not enough room down here, but we also have uh, associated with this feral cell, we also would have westerlies. And then last but not least, up here at the surface um, associated with the polar cell we have polar easterlies so we kind of have surface winds that alternate we kind of have in the northern hemisphere the northeast trades and then we have the mid, -last, mid latitude westerlies and then we have the polar easterlies along the surface 